Welcome, everyone, to the next episode of the podcast. It's been not quite a year, but probably seven, eight months. I don't know. When was June? Right? So 10 months? Is it June 10 or months? July? I June or July. July. Sorry. It could have been July. Anyway, been a lot of months, mm -hmm. um, eight, nine months since we podcasted last. And uh, all I can think about is Randy Quaid and Independence Day. Hello, boys. I'm back. Right? It's us. Love it. We're back. I love it. We're back. Ready to record. Um, Flying after, high. After a whole long time of us not podcasting at all. And I normally, all my listeners out there, I normally blame Kevin when we can't podcast. It's normally Kevin's fault. Everything's normally Kevin's fault. But, but this time. This time, it's all me. I'm in the process of doing some preparation for kitchen remodel and some other stuff. And my basement was just where we podcast is in my basement. And it was just impossible to have the podcast stuff set up while, you know, we were going through all that stuff. So anyway, not Kevin's fault. He's still a piece of shit, but True. Not, not in this instance. This time I'm a piece of shit, which is fine. So we got a couple of topics to talk about today. And I'm hoping that, um, uh, Maybe we'll come to a consensus on some of these things. Oh, I and hope And if, if we don't come, well, that's Oh, God, true. I hope not. And, and if we do come to a consensus, it's probably generalized and it's probably something that, you know, most of the listeners will agree with too. But I want to start with, imagine you're opening up your own jujitsu school from okay. scratch, right? Sure. You as a purple belt have been training a long time, right? Just as long as I have. Um, I'm not sure why you're still a purple belt, but whatever. We'll talk about that later. Um, maybe I refer back to you being a piece of shit. Um, so imagine you're opening a jujitsu studio with all of the things that you want to do with this school, not what other schools are doing. I mean, there'll be a lot of overlap, of sure. course. Um, but what are some must haves for you? Like requirements. And I'm not going to even narrow this down to a certain area. Just you're opening up a gym, a jujitsu gym specifically, right? We can throw MMA in there as well, whatever. Um, what are some must haves for you? in an academy if you're opening one so this is you're gonna laugh because you're gonna I understand I, I think you're, hopefully you'll understand this without me having to explain it which i'll have to of course uh jujitsu mats would be the first thing okay because i go back no no i go back to that because remember when we started and we started in a keto school yeah and then that, was, that was the first thing i thought yeah, it popped okay. in my okay, head when okay. you said what, what do you need i was like Ugh. well it's i 20, know that was a long time ago it's 2023 like, yeah, now yeah. and this was like uh, 16 years ago i'm just making sure that's a check mark because yeah. i remember that that was so, not nice Let's dive into that. You mean really good, solid jujitsu mats. We trained on puzzle mats for probably the first yeah. 10 years. So I, do you think that it's worthwhile to invest in like super high quality tatami? Um, that means I don't mats, know. by the way. I, I don't um, know if they have to be super high quality, but I think you need, you know, brand names or anything like that. But I think if you're going to open up a, a, a school nowadays, right, you yeah. need good quality mats. Okay. Right. And you need mats that can support not only your rolling uh, but if you think about your takedown, your falls, your throws, right? You judo, need wrestling, judo, like yeah, that. things like that. Okay. You're going to need quality mats, right? Uh, again, like I said, we've trained on puzzle mats before. Um, but if you're going to give high quality training, you're not just rolling on the ground, okay. right? Especially if you're looking to do competitive jujitsu, you stand on your feet, right? Wrestling has to be a big part right. of that. Uh, you know, nowadays with the cross training, there's going to be some judo in that. There's a lot of throws that people throw into jujitsu, uh, <laughs> and being able to train those. Well said. There's a lot of throws that people throw in. So Kevin literally picked the lowest hanging fruit uh, from that question, right? The literally the thing that I think every single person listening would have assumed. Sure, I, just and not I get necessarily it. And mentioned. I only thought of that it. again because of the first time we ever trained was. So on I'm going to give you mats. the next option too, I, the next selection from from your. I, you know what? Let me go with you because because I, I don't know. Like must haves. Uh, I, I'm a pretty basic person, right? I want a square room, and uh, I want some mats, and okay. I want some students. Okay. Other than that, I, mm. I think I would be I think I would be happy with anything else. Again, if, if I was to open up a school, uh, if I was to say, oh, I'm going to open up a school uh, next year, right? I would look in, I would look to open up. I guess it depends what kind of school. I, I guess I'm showers I, for me. If it's I'm a open, must have. It's 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 a nice to have. It's a know, must, must have, have for if I'm going to open up a gym. Really? Right? And I'm I'm. I want I want. I a better, think in the real world, maybe outside of this conversation. I'm much more all in as a person than you are. Sure. For sure. And uh, I think if I'm going to open one that's different than where I'm at currently, mm -hmm. right, then different than what I'm doing right at this moment, we don't have showers. I think showers are a must have for me. You know what? I'm going to take a step back. If we're going to say, must, again, must haves, but really nice to haves, um, I would look for a locker room area. Mm. I think that's probably okay. the, the biggest downfall to where we're at right now. 
is there's no way to lo- change. So do you do you really mean changing no, I, room like area? A, a changing room. That's it. Or locker room. Changing room area. How about you a don't, changing room you area? You don't need a space for your yeah. your shit, right? You can just leave it somewhere and Well, that's the problem. Like it's and again, and small schools and area, right? But you're in your I would say changing room area and a big enough area where people could stick their bags. Like you could just build some shelving. Especially actually, you know that what? That is outside of the training area. That's outside of the training area okay. and not right on the mat in front of it. Think of where we train now, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, the bags are always in the way. My bag is always in the freaking way. Like, and I feel terrible. Oh, There's nowhere to put it. We Shoes put are our there. bags on the mats. No, they're not on the mat. They're right outside the mat. And I got to step over top yeah. of them and, and you got to worry about it. So it, you're going to say my must have would actually be a, a big changing area. No, 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 no. Actually step back. Seating area slash equipment area. So that was changing area being number two. So that was my next must have is a, I'm not going to say large, but a reasonably accommodating Robust. Nah, no. I use that. I like accommodating. I use I that think, for yeah. the thicker chicks. <laughs> if anybody's a, a Charles Barkley fan, those big girls down in San Antonio. Anyway, um, <laughs> if you don't know that, Google San Antonio girls and Charles Barkley and Shaq. Anyway, um, I think a sizable entrance yeah. area along yeah. with seating with enough room for if all the parents wanted to come in, maybe not all, but a sizable yeah. enough, right? 20, 20, 25 people could comfortably come and watch class. I'd be happy with 10 to 15. Okay. Yeah. Right? We got, we, we got less than 10. Yeah. Right. I mean, just, I mean, just amount of people. Cause you could squish in a little bit yeah, more, yeah, yeah. but if you could fit comfortably five to 10 people and, and, and the equipment. So I, I think equipment as a separate thing, right? I think I, I go back to your changing room mm-hmm. or changing area or whatever that might be. Sure. Um, Right, spots for your your bag, your gym bag, your book bag, whatever, and uh, you know somewhere not part of the uh, guest area, right? Yeah. Where you know you got to be a member to even think about even going back into that area to change, sure. right? Um, I think that's a must-have for me. Showers for sure. Um, two bathrooms, one bathroom I don't think is enough. I really don't. I think wow. two bathrooms with a shower. Um, or Each. multiple showers. I'm not sure about that, right? I'm just, I'm trying yeah, to yeah, work yeah. it out of my head. A shower or showers. See, I, see I don't, I don't like the idea. I don't of... think we can ever get a daytime program mm-hmm. where people might want to come between lunch or maybe start before the, their work day. Sure. Um, if we don't have the ability to shower, right? Because yeah. I would, I would never, where we're at now, I could never do like a, a mid afternoon class. My flexibility at work would allow me to do that, but I could never do that because I'm sweaty and nasty. Yeah. And uh, without the ability to take a shower, I just, I don't even know that I'd want to do that A, to myself or B, to the people I got to work with for the last half of the day. So I think a shower is kind of a big deal for me. Uh, But I agree wholeheartedly with your changing room, locker room area. Yeah. Absolutely. Somewhere not part of the normal training area. Somewhere private. Yeah. Honestly, right? From a changing standpoint. Private and, is yes, just due to the fact that we're changing, and yeah, I mean we're right. not like dick flopping in the wind. No, changing. no, no. Se- well, semi- you, you might, but I'm not. Se- semi, semi private, semi private. Somewhere you can put in there, especially. And again, we talk about. I think the locker school. room where you said it first made yeah. a ton of sense. The, the right? transition between a kids and adult yeah, class, yeah. like, and, and, and yeah. again, it's not that big of a deal, but it's kind of a hassle. Like, especially if you have you have a single bathroom, right? right. And that becomes always an issue. I was I always come to jujitsu changed and ready to go, but I need to. I sweat a lot. I sweat a ton. Right, and I need to change before I leave. Right, right. So, and sometimes it takes an extra twenty minutes for me to get ready just be, to leave yeah, because I agree. there's three or four people in front of me waiting to go. So, I think a changing area would be nice. What else? What else you got as a? L- let's go with must have, like to have. What else you got on this last year? I don't really have a whole lot else. You know, honestly, like we talked about, I'm I'm pretty basic, right? What do you think about like loner geese? You think you need an area to like no, have loner geese? You think no, like that? I, I, no, I like the idea of maybe having like a gi top if someone comes in no gi and we're doing some drilling or something like that. Maybe okay. some, like a new student. I don't, I don't see. What about a reception area? Uh, again, nice to have. Uh, as Take long it as you or leave it. Yeah, as long as, as you have a big enough area. Like or somebody at least like who can meet somebody at the door, however that happens. I, I mean, I long, again, uh, as long as there's a big enough area you can walk in and not be in people's way. Right. I think you're good. Okay. All right. How do you so. feel about, uh, let's transition to, and let's say jujitsu MMA gym. What do you think about like equipment storage? Should that be like heavy bags and stuff like that? Or should you have them or should they, you know, can well, you- I mean, obviously if you're going to, if you're going to, 
if you're going to provide uh, MMA, boxing, kickboxing, any kind of things, right? Sure. You need you need heavy bags, and you need heavy bags that are out all the time. Sure. Plain and simple. You right, need right, hanging right. heavy. So you need the area for hanging heavy bags. Well, I've seen other schools where they have like the you know the things that you got to roll out, right. you got to move them, right? And it slows down class. Uh, and is, it, is being that part a of a gym that big you, deal though. Yeah, I, I think oh, I think okay. if you're looking to get if you're going to go to a gym and you're looking to do. Um, like if you're looking to do any kind of like cross training on that standpoint, whether it's you want to fight or if you're self defense or just health because you like doing it, mm-hmm. right? The ability to jump between those and not have to set them up, not be have to slow down, um, it, it, it's worthwhile, right? You're looking at these classes that are anywhere, you know, a long class is an hour and a half, right? Most right. classes are uh, 45 minutes, maybe an hour, sure, right? And if they're an hour long class, it's really 45 minutes worth of work, which seems like a lot. But as you're you're transitioning through things, you're doing different moves, and, and you're doing if you're doing any of that kind of cardio. That transition time between stinks, takes forever. You get cooled down, you get distracted, the motivation goes away. So having the area, if you're going to provide that, having the right kind of setup is, in my opinion, super important, right? Having the heavy bags there ready to go, mm. right? Having uh, the other equipment that you need. Now, some equipment maybe not as important, but I think of if you're going to do like a, any kind of like kickboxing, boxing with it as well, or any kind of MMA thing, right? You need to be able to go. I think you need to be able to transition from one to the other and have the ability to do that easily. What about a half cage if you're going to do MMA? Do you think I, any kind of cage is required or yes, no? Yes. Required? Required. If you're going to be a serious MMA school, um you need a cage. And the reason I say you need a cage is because it's different. Like I know you can you you could argue you could pad a wall, but the give is different, the shape is different, um having to be able to deal with what, you know, putting your foot on there and, and it's it's I remember the first time I put my foot on a cage, mm. I was so concerned I was going to catch my toe in there, right? And it's it's actually kind of hard to catch your toe in there if you do it right, but it was a serious concern. So being you know not knowing that, not being able to feel that, you know, not having to worry about. I know what you're going to say I'm going to cut the cage in half with my toes, but <laughs> I know I know I know exactly what's coming. But I think it's That's a serious exactly. concern. <laughs> I was like, it might be a good I'm thing. I'm going to Wolverine through it, it. It might be a good thing if your toe got ripped off by the cage, especially with your feet. Oh, uh, I don't no, want to do this today. No, but uh, yeah. No, no. If you're going to do an MMA school, because it's all in cages now. Did the cage move when your foot came up to it? When it saw your foot come up, did it like back up or did it like lean back? Like it used to be jump? bent in, but now it's bent out. Look like, Mag- like Magneto. Cage was like lean back. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> anyway you gotta have a cage yeah, if you're gotta, gonna run it okay. you have to run a cage, have a cage. you have to at a minimum a half cage yeah. the the pressure the the feeling leaning against the so cage you is think, different animal so just so i'm clear mm-hmm. hard requirement so do you think hard that requirement. If, mma school hard requirement is, is so a, you some think piece, half cage minimum. you think people who are looking for mma should use that as criteria for selecting an mma gym Hey, if they don't have a cage, I don't know if they're serious. Is that what you mean? Yeah. I, I, I'll be honest. I, that's what I think. Interesting. Now, uh, I, there, I'm sure there's exceptions out there and, and people may prove me wrong. But if, I, if, if I'm giving somebody advice, right, and they're like, oh, I want to go to, I want to do MMA. I want to go, I want to compete. And I don't care if it's amateur or professional, but if you want to take it serious and you walk into a place without a cage, you got to question that because do, are they really taking their MMA training serious? Do they have the equipment to truly simulate what it's like going to be in there? Because again, it is different. You know what I mean? It's, it's just a different feel. You push a little bit different. There's there's different things you can do. You don't do think like a, a startup gym with who's just kind of coming. You, you think, can do it. It's a risk. And, and as a one. new student coming in, right? If you're like, hey, listen, I'm gonna push. So startup money should include at least a half cage or a full cage. I I think so. Yeah. Okay. If, if you want to be an MMA gym, that's what you should have. Interesting. Hundred percent agree. Hundred percent think so. Wow. Okay. Um, so what else you got? What else is on your list? Like when you think of going into a gym, um, or you were starting a gym, what are some things that you're going to, you're going to do because you feel like you need to do them? You know what I find unnecessary? If we were going to talk about jujitsu, MMA, kickboxing and stuff, we'll go the exact opposite. Mm, Sure. I don't think you need any kind of workout equipment. So I think it's an advantage if you got some, uh, some kettlebells, um, and some things like that. But I know a lot of places they, they want to like have some sort of, uh, you know, uh, fitness lip, area or fitness whatever. Area. Yeah. And, and I don't necessarily know if that's a, that's a necessity. Right. And again, I, I know, I know a lot of times, again, if you're, if you're running professionals, right. Having that area to, to maybe to be able to do a little bit of both, but a lot of times, you know, 
when I work out or I worked out, uh, if I ever did, right? There's, <laughs> you have your gym days where you're looking to lift, you're looking to do heavy, right? right, right, right? right. And then you have your, you know, martial arts days. Uh, and they may cross, but they don't necessarily cross at the same place. Now, if so you, you don't have think, a b- you don't big enough like, facility You're to talking both, about like weightlifting stuff too, right? And correct. Treadmills and stuff like that? Yeah, treadmills, like machines, okay. the tricep machines. You know, I think I think of the, some places you go and they have a couple of machines there, you know, like a fly machine mm-hmm. or something like that. Now, I think kettlebells, having some kettlebells, doing some cross training, stuff like that, it's, it's all great stuff to have, but small stuff you can kind of put off to yeah, the side. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like uh, workout equipment. I know I've seen some places that had like equipment sitting in the middle of it. It was just never used because people came there do the martial arts training do, right right now again you can run a uh as an example a strong style you know the in cleveland mm-hmm. uh they have a huge facility right but they right. have a, they, right. they actually have a gym you can actually belong to the gym and have nothing to do with the martial arts part of it that's great that's an extra bonus sure. if you have the money yeah, to yeah. do something like that but people that like shoehorn this this equipment into theirs mm-hmm. it seems like a waste to be honest to me no and i i think i agree with that i think in the the focus of i'm starting a jujitsu academy well, then let's sprinkle MMA in there, right? I mean, although, you know, nowadays, right, MMA academies might have jujitsu. Um, but sure. if it's a pure jujitsu academy, they may not be, right, or, or a sub MMA focused, whatever. And even some of these like MMA gyms slash jujitsu gyms, boxing gyms, they run a fitness, right? They're yeah, a fitness yeah, gym. Yeah, yeah. Right. A, but even from that standpoint, right, a couple, a couple of uh, dumbbells, some kettlebells, maybe some rubber bands, right? I think right. those are the kind of things that people are looking for uh, in a gym. Right. So those are the kind of things they would add as, as kind of nice to have mm. to add, maybe to expand your brand a little bit. Maybe you're a jujitsu school, but you're like, hey, I'm going to run a, a weekend boot camp uh, for 40 year old ladies. Right. right. Um, you know, whatever are, you know, those are the kind of things that you can add in there. Again, I, I see gyms and it's been a long time since I've seen them, but I've seen gyms in the past that had like two or three pieces of like workout machinery, mm. like shoehorned in there. And it was like such a waste of space. And I only see people sitting on there. Like it always be one person sitting there waiting for class to start. And then one person lifting twice because they thought they were tough. Right. And then they regretted it once it came to the graph. Time. I would love as a super like to have, super want, super nice to have, super really want to have if I ever open up a gym on my own, a separate training area too. Not just one set of mats where the regular mm-hmm. class goes, but, and it doesn't necessarily have to be equivalent. And what I think about that is being able to host, um, uh, uh, women's only classes along yeah. with the kids classes at the same time, mm-hmm. right? Give the opportunity for parents to come in and say, Hey, your kids are doing a class. And also there's an open mat on the mats next door, right? Or the mats around the corner or whatever, a whole separate set of training area. I think, um, uh, you know, you're going to pay a nice price for it, right? Sure. Real estate's not, you know, that kind of open available square footage mm-hmm. isn't cheap, but I think that would be something really, really cool as a nice to have. As a person who trained in one of those places, it is super nice. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, right? I bet. It, it, was, it was cool. You could see where oh, it you're was. talking about uh, Griffin Roll. Yeah, Griffin they like had an so, awesome oh, layout. Yeah, it's huge, right? And you don't realize how big it is, but yeah. it was nice because you have the you know the area you're walking, you have the mats. Because you guys would box was, on one side well, and then jujitsu well, yeah, on the other we side. Had, and yeah, and we well, had yeah. the regular mats and they had, they had a full cage. Yep. Um, and they had a, a small, I would think it was a full boxing ring, but they had a boxing ring and then they had a set of, it looked like a big wrestling mat essentially was the size of it mm-hmm. uh, there, but it wasn't even just the area was really nice, but it was, it was also nice because the classes would be a decent size. And then if you were at a, one of the boxing classes, is a prime example, right? You'd come in, you do your warm ups, you do some drilling. And then the people that wanted a spar could go next door and spar. The other people could be there and you could have them separated. Right. Right. So you can have the people going hard, you know, people in the same mindset, you'd be kind of cramped together because it was a little bit smaller, but people are there, they're doing the yeah. thing that you have that same understanding. And then you have the, more relaxed, the less intimidating, just uh, the boxing, right? right. You, can, you can bring in the people who don't have to feel I love that idea. You can learn the stuff. You can do there. So, yeah, that would be a real, I mean, that's a, again, if you get a facility that's big enough to be able to right. do that and then the mats and everything else to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a nice to have, but again, it is a really nice sure. to have. Yeah, super nice to have. Is it required to start a gym? No, I don't know. I've never trained at one that had one, so it's obviously yeah. not required, Split right? I'm um, 16 years in. Uh, but I think, you know, if I was to ever open one and I wanted to take it, I'm not going to say more serious because we're pretty serious, but take it to the next level. Maybe mm-hmm. I think that would be from, one of the if, criteria. If you're looking from a, a business standpoint, like if you're looking to run yeah. a top notch, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like that, that like yeah. center of excellence kind of thing. Sure. I think that would be a great idea. I feel the same way about the showers and bathrooms and mm-hmm. changing room as well. Yeah. I and mean, I think if you're going to go in, all of these things are at the top five of my priority list. Um, I, I do agree with you. I don't know that you need a fitness center or you need a, uh, weightlifting area or things like that, but 
so nice to have. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Required to open up a jujitsu gym? I don't think so. Yeah. Um, I think there's one more item on my list, as I think we've exhausted probably a good chunk of the things. Um, I want someone who is designated for new people who walk through the door. Um, this is not a thing that you purchase as part of the academy. This is a, a business strategy or a, an, a gym strategy. Um, when someone new walks in the door, everyone in the room knows who's going to go talk to the mm-hmm. new person, right? We have a pretty small academy and I'm the one who normally when somebody walks in the door, if I'm there, if I'm not there, somebody else handles it. But if I'm there, hey, I'm Scott, how are you doing? Right. You're here to check class out. Right. Check out our website. Did you sign the waiver? Right. Stuff like that. Mm. And I think uh, somebody dedicated for that aspect alone and and whether you um, uh, you give them a tuition discount because they're the person. Right. They're going to stop what they're doing if they're in mid role. Yeah. Right. Because they're obviously training to. And, and I don't know that. Um, depending on the academy type, especially what I'm thinking, that you need necessarily somebody working the front desk or things like yeah. that, depending on how big you get. But somebody who's going to stop what they're doing because mm-hmm. they see somebody they don't know come in the door. Yeah, I would think I like that. Having that, I like the idea of the designated person. I would think also, you know, what's their strategy? Again, if you're talking about a purely jujitsu school, that's probably less important, right? Somebody comes up and greets them. Hey, watch class, sit down, right, right, go right. from there. If you're looking, but more you still about, need somebody. Sure. If you're thinking more from a, an overall business, like a fitness center kind of yeah, thing, where, yeah, you know, yeah. you need somebody who's going to be there who can, you know, uh, talk to that person, greet that person, and, and not necessarily got to be careful of the intimidation that you have from that person, right? You know what I mean? So Are what they, you're saying is you could do it because you're not a good looking correct. dude and, yeah. and you don't like look like you're in shape at all. Right. You're, you're like, well, this guy can do it. I can do like, anything. Oh, yeah. This guy. Right? Like, yeah. Somebody who I can relate to, mm-hmm. right? If I walked up, you know, physical specimen that I am, maybe I'm in. Sorry, I'm, I'm not intimidating at all. It's fine, right? Judge no. me, it's fine. But, <laughs> no, but you, well, you, do, you need someone with that personality who can help yeah. quickly not read the room, but read the person, have an understanding of what they're there. And you said kind of be that salesperson, like, hey, we do the jujitsu class, we do, you know, the Right, the are you here for class. the kids? Are you here to yeah, check yeah, out Yeah, 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 we, we run a really good kids class, right? And you need someone who's going to kind of come off as friendly, yeah. right? I think that's where, I think a lot of, we talked about this before, like with the kids' jujitsu classes, right? I think that's where Taekwondo is still... Uh, the reason why they're kind of king of kids' classes, because you walk in and it's a kid-friendly environment. It's a kid-friendly sure. person. Now, it always depends, right? Kevin's Some schools, kids still do yeah. that crazy martial arts stuff, yeah, yeah, too. Yeah. And, and so not there's, jiu-jitsu, by the way. They do some jiu-jitsu. They do a lot of jiu-jitsu, actually. They're just not, it's not as violent. They grapple. They grapple, yeah. I don't know how they call it jiu-jitsu. Oh, no, no, they do. They, they the move they do is the jiu-jitsu. It's, it's, the, it's more of a mentality of how hard they roll, how much they don't roll. Don't they got karate geese on? What's that? Yes. No, not jujitsu geese. Correct. So they do more like downs or throws or anything like they're that. More like no gi. They do like no gi oh, with okay. with gi's on. Okay. Fair really enough. weird. Yeah. No, no gi with. They're not allowed to touch. I mean, they can like grab, don't grab the collars. Don't they grab. don't teach any kind of collar stuff or oh. anything. So they're really teaching no gi stuff. Um. So grappling. So grappling. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, it's not jujitsu. Grappling. Yeah. It's, it's more grappling. Got you it. can jujitsu fundamentals just without the grab. You know. Those. So, yeah. Got it. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Catch wrestling. I don't know. And I don't disagree with you, right? I mean, when I think of hey, I'm going to get my kids into martial arts. My frame of reference right now goes to jujitsu because I mm-hmm. run a kids jujitsu sure. program. But prior to that, it was oh they're doing some kind of karate. Some yeah, kind of you taekwondo, want some, some you kind want of... somewhere as a parent. You want your kid. You want your kid to go somewhere where they're going to enjoy it and want to get out, out away from. It. That's what I do because I want to shove my kids off to somebody else. Yeah, I get so that. I want I them to that. go work out, have some fun, and I want them to be excited to go. So yeah. that's those are the things when I think of my you know especially ten and under kids. That's what I want. I want somewhere fun and active, right? Because get them. At least from my standpoint, they're they're like me. I want to get them from sitting off their ass and playing video games all day. I just want to get them out of the house. I'm very. And if they learn some extra stuff that's useful, I'm great. Ten and on, I think my mentality really changes, especially with my older one. But is he coming to jujitsu then? Because he's ten. Thinking about it. So I'm trying, I'm, to, I'm trying to figure out how to fit it in. I'm I'm very objective focused, and I don't like doing a lot of things that don't have some kind of outcome predefined. Right? Not like yeah. You know, not like WWF, right, or WWE. Uh, no, 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 yeah, 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 But like some kind of and a me- worthwhile outcome, some measurable metric yeah. or some kind of thing that I can use. And I feel like having did done, mm-hmm. having spent some time doing done did the uh, done did uh, Taekwondo in my life, mm-hmm. right, and in you know even some other mm-hmm. obscure martial arts, right, that uh, you know you mess around with and dabble with. Um, I don't know that when I think about putting my kid in martial arts right now than anything other than jujitsu because we, I struggle with this currently and I'm working on a strategy right now. We have a lot of kids. Some kids are really high ranked. 
Yep. Right. By definition, people who have trained longer in a kids program are going to be high ranked. So um, I don't mean that as like jujitsu uh, black belt. You've got who, some good kids. I got some good kids, and kids some of them have been kids. around a long time yeah. and have high ranks. But what does that mean in a kids program? If you see somebody who's a gray and black belt, um, are you assuming that they're going to tap everybody out? Because when you see a black belt in jujitsu, yeah. you immediately should understand that that person has gone through hell and has done far more to get their black belt than any other black belt in any martial art. Okay. I don't, there's no comparison, right? I mean, there's, there's, it's not even a debatable. It's a fact, right? Brazilian Jiu Jitsu has one of the longest um, tracks to black belt uh, in sure. comparison to every other martial art. So when you look at a black belt from Taekwondo or you look at a black belt from Jiu Jitsu, you already know that that Jiu Jitsu guy put in a hundred more times the effort and actually had to be good. I'd say the effort, something. yeah, and the mentality. Like I said, yes. I, I think that's the biggest thing is you go to a jiu-jitsu school, and again, not that uh, kind of diverse sure, or different no topic, but, but, yeah. but, when we, but when you go to a jiu-jitsu school, like you said, those guys who are uh, purple and above, but especially the black belts yeah, and yeah, the yeah. brown belts, yep. you know they they went through hard sessions, mm-hmm. right? That's kind of the assumption. Maybe there's some schools out there that don't, right? You get it. Possible. But, but really the assumption is, and I say the majority of those guys have went through hard sessions. They've trained hard. They've had, you said, terrible days, yep. right? They've had long sessions uh, 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 of really grinding. Right again, that is not always the case. Uh, well, you said when you look at a Taekwondo school, some of those guys might have right. Some, you know, I know a lot of schools do cross training and everything, but you, it's not. I would say overall, from what I've seen, the mentality isn't the same. No, and and I'm circling that back to us talking about our kids, sure. and that's why I want my kids to be um, uh, objective focused. Jiu Jitsu is going to allow me to immediately measure their skill level mm-hmm. against other people who are trying to measure their skill mm-hmm. level in a similar arena, right? Yeah. Take one, no, you don't necessarily have that except for sparring. Sparring, you can have, hey, I'm better sparrer than you yeah. or my form is prettier than yours or I do the moves with a little more conviction than others, mm. which is fine. But those things are sometimes suge- subjective. Sure. Right? Jiu-Jitsu is not subjective. Yeah, even with the sparring. It, again, right, depending right, right. on the mentality of the sparring, right? Sure. Again, I, as, I got as, more points than you, but the other guy kicked way harder and it yeah. was it was As a person who's was, been, you know, been in you know, sparring right. matches as in like, you know, <laughs> I've hit a guy three or four times and he hit me once and he won. Right. right, right I'm right, telling right. you. Exactly. Like, there may not have been any points, but I'm, if you asked us honestly, he mm-hmm. won because it hurt a lot. Exactly. Right. So again, it, it can be, yeah, I would agree. So I'm agree. trying to figure out, and I'm segueing this into uh, uh, something I'm trying to figure out with my kids program is I got some kids who have gray and black belts, gray belt. So gray and black is just a gray belt, gray belt with a black bar down the middle. Mm-hmm. And the way that the ranks go is white belt, then white, gray, 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 black. I don't have anybody who's above gray, black right now in my kids program. And I'm trying to think, so some of them, in order to get there, that's like four plus years of training. Okay. You go through a year of white, you go through a year of white and gray, you go through a year of gray, you go through a year of black and gray before you're ready to take that next step. Four stripes, you get a stripe every quarter-ish, right? Maybe a little bit before a quarter because I'm trying to get kids a belt in a full year. Yeah. So I can't do a full quarter because at the end of a quarter, you'd only have four and then the next quarter, which would be yeah. the fifth quarter, gets you promoted. So I'm trying to get them a full belt in a calendar year if they're consistent and if they earn it, right? So I'm not trying to really give them anything. Sure, no. Just if they want to earn one, it takes two, two and a half months to yeah. get a stripe. Four stripes, the fifth stripe would be the next belt. So, But I got some kids who are ready to make hurdles into a color belt. Okay. Yellow's next, okay? And I don't know if I'm giving any yellow belts out if those kids aren't killers. Like I really like no, and I and I and I like the mentality. Of they're that. not a, and if I they're not it, an assassin on the mats, mm-hmm. at least where I think somebody who has trained for a few years should be. Not an adult. That's not mm-hmm. a comparison to that. But you know, I got some 11, 12 year olds who are ready to or or will be within the next six months. You know, maybe a year, be ready to make that hurdle into the next color belt. Right, not gray. Right, that mm-hmm. gray series is like a real beginner series. I mean, all the kids belts are sure. beginner series, right? Because but Even if you go relatively, through all we're of talking them, about kids. by the time you're 16, yeah. you can only ever jump to blue, blue. belt. Sure. So, but I don't know that I'm going to have, I'm not going to ever give a yellow belt to somebody who I don't think is a badass. So, and I think that comes down to- And that's to, measurable. That's yeah. why I'm saying this right now in comparison no. to us talking about martial arts. Sure. Is like, by the time somebody gets that yellow belt from me, mm-hmm. like maybe some other people are different, dude, they're going to be badass. And like I think super that, that kind of goes back to the original topic where you were talking about opening up a school yeah. and what you need. I, I think a lot of times with that, you got to think about that mentality, right? Yep. What, is your, what is your ultimate goal? 
right? And a lot of people, and we talk about this in our personal lives about that, you know, what's what, what their company should be ethical and all those kind of things. It's really, what's the goal, right? right. I, I look at it is if you open a school, right, your goal isn't to maximize profit over uh, quality. Your goal is to maximize quality and make some profit with it as well. Yes. Where a lot of other schools are about maximizing, maximizing profit um, and then, you know, and bringing quality along with it. And usually it's, it's somewhere in between, right? Obviously they're not looking to pull out crap, but they're also not looking to isolate a good portion of the, of the clientele. And with kids, the way you run a school, you, ha- I don't think you do, right? Because of personality and things like that, but you have the ability to isolate. Actually, I, you definitely have the ability and you definitely do isolate certain kids. I'll give a prime example, just from a personal standpoint, uh, my oldest son, right? Uh, he, he used to come, he'll like, he would love to come. Right. And he, he doesn't mind that kind of competitive nature. Uh, my younger son, uh, he just won't go. He won't like it. He won't want to do it. Right. It'll be, it's just, he's not interested. He doesn't have that competitive spark yet right. uh, when it comes to that. And he needs something a little bit more kiddish. Mm-hmm. Right. And again, so to me, you know, decision, especially for him is to keep that and not that those schools aren't competitive. Right. But it's competitive second. Right. right. And, fun and, and, first. Yeah. Keep fun that, fun, that fun first, that excitement. There's still a learning aspect to it and stuff, but it's, it's more, I would say, a fun, fun over competitive. Right is what they're looking at, and and there's a lot of kids where that is a a better. If you get them to come along, right, they get a little older, and then you can reach into that competitive. You can get into that right. drive. You can push a little bit farther. Uh, but also, I mean, again, you your prime example of your school, right? You're spending your your time, your quality time, you, you know, the effort, your cost, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to run something that makes you happy, and you see the the benefits to that. And I think there's benefits to both. Just understanding what kind of organization you're looking to do. Which actually kind of goes back to your, uh, you know, opening up a gym and then your two room thought process, right? right? Having the ability, as kind of was talking about, to be able to separate those, right? To be able to have a, a competitive class, uh, whether whether you're talking about adults or children, right? right? Being Absolutely. able to separate that and be able to move that is, is a big thing. So. It's awesome, and I think what I think jujitsu has that most other martial arts don't have, and I this spans the kids through adults program, is that invisible hand that works throughout the ether, right? That you can't really put your finger on what it is, but tournaments bring it out, right? Yeah. Hey, what schools are the best? Who's training the hardest? Who's put the most time in, right? Who, who went home with the most medals? Um, and the invisible hand of if you're a fraud or a phony, there is a secret organization in the ether on Reddit and in other places that will hunt you down and find out if you're a fraud or a McDojo. Who'd sure. you get your black belt from? Who'd you get your brown belt from? Oh, you were a belt jumper, right? We all know a bunch of yep. those people who've jumped between academy and, and affiliation and school and pulled those things in. Taekwondo doesn't have that. Karate doesn't have that. No. There's no invisible hand. There's no secret um, uh, uh, willingness from the community to police their brass in the sense and, and do that for the organizations that exist and for the, the general community as a whole. Um, we've all gone to tournaments and see kids get walloped. Sure. And it's like, oh, you know, they're... And, but you see kids from good schools yeah, and then with you good see, instructors getting walloped. Right. And then on the flip side, you see kids from schools that, you know, maybe they just train in their garage, yeah. right, in their killers. And it's all about mentality. But jujitsu has that um, kind of... Um, mentality as a whole anyway why do you think that i got i, I have a theory it, well on it's why. because jujitsu is wholly one-on-one right unlike mm-hmm. karate where you don't have to necessarily have another person ever be involved in anything that you do right you don't you don't have to spar to be a black belt in karate or I, maybe some karate right sure, let me not generalize sure. but in, in taekwondo you don't necessarily have to be good at sparring right it's not a requirement for promotion as in jujitsu in order to develop and climb the ladder right? To have that vertical trajectory. It's almost a requirement. You have to, it is a requirement. You have to be good, right? Yeah. And if you're not good, this is where that um, invisible hand in the ether mm-hmm. will come back and say, oh, remember when uh, uh, Kevin Casey, he was a, a, yeah, yeah. a Hicks and Gracie brown black. belt. He promoted himself to black belt. Oh, oh yeah. And then immediately the world said, can't promote yourself to black belt. What's wrong with you? And he said he was going through like a spiritual journey or whatever he said, and that he felt like he was ready to put that black belt on and he got blasted for it. Oh yeah. And Kevin Casey, if you guys aren't aware, Google him. He's phenomenal. He's a great competitor, great jujitsu practitioner, phenomenal. Went through a spiritual journey, said he, he felt like he was ready to put a black belt on. I don't know if he saw it in a dream or a dog told him, whatever. I don't know the story about this, but he put his black, he put a black belt on himself 
and like wore it to class the next day. I don't know if it was Cron, Hicks and Son, or somebody called him out on it. And then once that was made known to the jujitsu community as a whole, it was like, dude, come on. Of all things, you cannot promote yourself in jujitsu. Yeah. You everybody wants to climb a ladder, right? Black belt means black belt's a black belt no matter where you go. Right. I mean, a black belt means something mm -hmm. maybe different to uh, people individually, but a black belt is like the coup de gras, right? Yeah. You've done what you needed to do and you've hit expert level, mm -hmm. right? We all know that once you get a black belt in jujitsu, you're now the worst dude in the mat, in the gym. And right. Cause white belts are expected to lose and everybody else below you is expected to lose. Yeah. So you got to hold your flag up high and you got to put the target on your back and you got to whoop some ass. And then you look at all the other black belts in your room, like, God damn, I got to fight way harder now because I still got to win. So it sucks. But oh yeah. Like black belt sucks once you get it. I mean, it's great that you spend all this time to get it, but um, sometimes you got to prove why you're the hammer, and yeah, it's hard to well, it's hard and, to be and, the nail more. Yeah, and, and it's funny, and I I think I think why I think why jujitsu schools tend to be a little bit tougher is because a lot of bit tougher. Uh, it is, and, and a lot it's of because it tougher. I think a lot of the other schools, uh, I think they have a I don't know if it's 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 a fair they they have a built in excuse, right? I can't I'll, I can hurt somebody really bad. This isn't the streets, mm -hmm. right? You know, you see that all the time. I'm I'm a big fan of uh, jumping on YouTube or like Facebook and, and looking at the fighting videos and stuff like that. And there's always somebody there who's a. And I think there's a lot of good thing, a lot of other different martial arts that are out there. There's a lot of positives to them. But like, oh, well, Wing Chun is, is is for the streets. Like he could kill a man if he could do it, right? And, and there's always these excuses. So how do you ever test the efficacy? Well, of that. So and that's, that's the problem. I, and that's the problem. But but and I don't I don't like those excuses because again we've talked about this before. I look at a I look at a martial arts like Muay Thai. Right. If you're going to tell me those guys don't prove it day in, day out, that that sure. works and they're tough. Sure. You're nuts. So it, it's it's a little bit rougher. Right. You can have two really good guys roll extremely hard um, and, and, and not necessarily anybody gets overly hurt. Right. Once you start throwing the kicking and the punching in sure. there, right, there right, is a little right, bit more right. risk. There's a little There's a more reason they're called strikes yeah. because they're, yeah. right, they're yeah. making impact. In but them. it's still there. And again, if you if you look at sure, you, take your traditional, I don't know, Taekwondo, karate, whatever you want to do. And compare that to a Muay, Muay Thai school, sure. right? It's it's very obviously techniques are different, but you're talking about very similar things. You're talking about kick, kicking, punching, and some stand up grappling, right. right? Very the same thing. And you're talking about two totally different mentalities when it comes to ranking up, right? Both of them have to have the techniques. Both of them have a lot of tradition. You know, you have to be able to look pretty when you're doing a kick, right? But one of them, you got to look pretty when you're doing a kick and get a belt. The other one, you've got to kick somebody really hard and be ready for them to check it. And and yes, everything you just said is a fact. <laughs> I agree wholeheartedly. And we got to think where the majority of the time is when you're investing into training in jujitsu, the majority of your time, if not, I'm, I'm not going to say all of it because some schools attack and approach things differently. The majority of my time is in learning how to do jujitsu. Yeah. So when I think of when I did Taekwondo, a good chunk of my, let's call it hour long class was one step sparring right? The imaginary attacker who was going to do something to me. And I'm spending some time in the air, blocking kicks, blocking punches, parrying, right? Doing all of that stuff, which is fine. But I spent a lot of time imagining that in my head. Sure. You know what I mean? Right? Just like banging the prom queen. It's all an imagination for me. Um, so when I think about like jujitsu, I do some moves and then I go try it on somebody who doesn't want to let me do that move to them. Yeah. I learn a form in Taekwondo and maybe it's got 89 moves and it's real pretty and it looks great and it's supposed to simulate some kind of attack or multiple attackers or whatever. I spent 20 minutes, you know, kicking and punching in the air, which could it be applicable? Maybe it'll get my kicks better. Maybe I'll get my punches better. But a lot of that time, let's call it 30 minutes of that one hour class was spent in imagination world. Sure. And it's not a direct influence. I'm going to, I'm going to reference a, a yeah. movie where, it's it, how it's done right. We're going to go to the karate kid, right? Mm. Silly, right? But, you know, it's wax on, wax off, wax on, wax off, right? And, but he showed him one move, right? And then he showed it and how it's supposed to work. Right. Right. And then he showed it worked. It's like, oh, that's how it works. If you look at a lot of- Yeah, but you, I, don't, I don't believe that's true. But, well, it, but if you look at that kind of idea, if you look at like shadow Dude, boxing- Dude, Ralph Macchio shadow wrestling, would have got his ass beat nah. by any- Listen. Ralph Macchio uh, is, was a man amongst men listen, back then. We're not going to discuss this right now. Yeah, but no, carry really on, though, carry we go on, back to like, if you look at like uh, shadow boxing, your shadow wrestling, your shadow jujitsu, yeah, yeah, the yeah. idea is you're not doing a 30 minute form. You're not doing a right. 16 form. Like you're doing a takedown. You're doing a, an escape, right? You're doing a, you know, a throw. Or you and then use it as a warm up. Well, not well, as you a, use it as a muscle memory, getting yes. better, and then you use it in application, live. right? Use it live, 
right? And again, you're not you're not you're not doing these shadow drills, you know, like a whole scenario and then going, okay, now do that in jujitsu. Right. You're using one or two moves. So it's the idea of using that practical application. And again, a lot of the traditional martial arts, for whatever reason, take that out of the schools. Yep. Right. And I think they take it out of the schools because you get bigger audiences. I think that, and I think that's sure. where they get bigger audiences and, and, it's, and it's, I can't blame them. Yeah. There's, there's less injuries when there's less contact. There's less, sure. yeah. um, uh, there's less. Most fat guys like me but, don't want to go to schools where they got to roll hard. Absolutely. And, and, you know, we're in that society right now, which we don't need to debate, but yeah. we're in that society right now where, um, uh, you know, maximum effort for minimal effort. And yeah, uh, uh, and again, but again, you say that society, but uh, Taekwondo, the eighties and nineties was huge. Right, and it's not like it's changed. Well, it's not like they it's, were tougher it's back dropped then. Dropped tremendously. I don't think it it's has. Just, when was, I, I think so. Well, no, no. I, oh, the, the early, popular, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, the popularity dropped. dropped. But it, but it's always been the same. Oh, yeah. Even keel it's, for it's toughness, the same shit, right? right? It just it, it dropped. But that's it, why you don't see any, or, or you rarely see. I shouldn't say any. You rarely see um, uh, karate black belts winning MMA fights. Well, that's or what you you see them, but they were karate black belts when they were twelve, and they transitioned to a real gym later. Well, yeah, but then they forget about them. You know, nobody cares about. I don't care about my my taekwondo black belts. No, Ever. but it, 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 and it, look at look at a, some of the guys we train with, right? Well, again, that's they what, have abandoned sure. entirely their mm-hmm. karate history yeah. because jujitsu has just taken them to the next level in terms of their um, ability to a. Now, I, it's I'm a gonna, gateway drug. Is all it it's is. It's a yeah, yeah. It gets them, you know, it gets their toes wet. Yeah, yeah. You get and you then, gotta, like jump yeah. in the pool full, and they're like, I don't want to swim in your shitty pond when I can swim in this badass pond yeah, 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 with yeah. killers. Yeah, yeah. With sharks. Why well, do I want to be a flounder when I can be a shark? Exactly. So next question. Um, uh, Micah Galval. Oh, okay. Sure, you've heard of the the pop in of him on steroids. Uh, so he got popped for steroids. He then got suspended from IBJJF for a calendar year yeah. starting in June uh, of 2022. So he gets popped, mm-hmm. and he gets a year suspension. He loses the youngest IBJJF world title holder, champion, whatever you call it. Um, he's no longer the youngest world champion in IBJJF. How do you feel about him saying, all right, I accept this suspension. I'll be back in a year, but I'm going to go do a bunch of jujitsu and grappling competitions and other promotions. Do you think that's like, there's multiple facets sure. to take this. Let's take it from opinion right away, right off the top mm-hmm. before we start to narrow this down. What are your sure. thoughts on that? If I'm a competitor, I don't like it. Let's just start from there. Okay. If I'm a competitor, I don't like it, right? Because I think uh, the rules, the culture, right, uh, uh, of jujitsu in general is perform enhancing is, is not allowed. It's illegal. I mean, it is, it's frankly, illegal, most of that stuff to take it. Um, if you're talking about uh, steroids for performance based, I know there's medical and that'll sure. lead into his yeah, thing yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah. But again, when we talk about sports and performance, it's, it's illegal. And it's frowned upon, right? So as a competitor... Because it's unfair. Because it's unfair. Yes, it's unfair. Because you're it's, assuming that everybody else is following the rules correct, and not on correct. the juice, and yeah. then you're on the juice yes. and you get hit. If yep. you have someone who's on the juice, someone who's not on the juice, it is an extreme competitive advantage. Sure. Right? It's, yep. it's, it's, and it's If nothing else, just yeah. then recovery, right? If, if it doesn't else. make you stronger, at least it helps you recover faster at and a, you can train more. Yeah, at, yeah. at yeah. a minimum. Yeah. And I say minimum. Sure. Right? right so right. so as, from a competitor standpoint, I wouldn't like that at, wouldn't like that at all, right? Again, we're not talking about a hugely organized sport. We're not talking about something that has a lot of money in there, right? And, and a lot of times these guys are hobbyists, right? So, to, well, to, Micah Galval's not a hobbyist. Some of the guys that he's going yeah. against, right? And you say he's, yeah, he may not be a hobbyist, but I bet, I bet if you look at there, there's probably a lot of high level competitors who have full time daily jobs. Probably right? teaching jiu jitsu, but, but yes. I bet there's yeah, some yeah. who don't, right? And it's maybe I'm some sure of they're didn't all teaching to... jiu jitsu, right? Nobody's just training full time 24 7. No. Right? Well, and again, you don't I make bet... money that way, yeah. right? And Unless and you're maybe it's changed, but I mean, you've like got crazy, hundreds yeah. of hundreds of people that are there, right? Uh, at some of these tournaments. Sure. I, I doubt they're all jiu jitsu. I don't think any of the top 10 are day well, jobs. Talking... I don't think they have day Probably jobs. Probably not top 10, but whatever. You're not having 10 men tournaments. Mike Gaval did not. Yeah. And then he goes and decides. Maybe because the money was right. Yeah. That another, he's going to go compete in another promotion mm-hmm. with a bunch of other people who are likely also on suspension from the IBJJF due to steroids. Well, see, hold on. Let me stop there there. Cause I think that's the, if that's the expectation uh, that, hey, we're all on steroids, let's all compete together. I, I think it's a little bit different compared to there's some other smaller organizations no, no, no. And, which are providing opportunity no, no, no. And, and I didn't, a good I didn't, portion. Of them. Okay. I didn't, I didn't want to go that route. Um, I if I implied of, that, yeah. I didn't. However, 
he's going to other promotions after the IBJJF banned him Mm -hmm. from competing. Now, I don't think the IBJJF has rules that says if we catch you competing in other promotions while you're banned, Mm -hmm. you're no longer allowed to come back. Should I don't. It's a great question. Right, because that's a great question. uh, Because there's no non there's no non competes. What's the? You're not signing a contract. Yeah, you're paying to compete, Mm -hmm. and there's no contract to sign. They're not. If the IBJJF was like the UFC, right, and said, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna pay the top twenty five guys, and we're gonna host tournaments, and you guys are gonna compete in our tournaments, and we're gonna pay you, um, and you pop, and we catch you in another promotion. Yes, your contract's gonna be null and void, and you're never gonna be able to train with us again. And maybe there's litigation that can happen because we want some of our money back." Totally different story. IBJJF isn't like that. They're a for-profit tournament host um, trying to be a jiu-jitsu um, organization that promotes guidelines on promotions and things like that. Whatever they are sure. there um, is kind of irrelevant. But they host tons of events all the time. They have big world championships. They have Pan Ams. They have these big mm-hmm. events, right? This dude goes and wins it. He enters the competition and he wins it. Likely he gets to enter for free. I don't know how that works. He wins it. Youngest BJJ um, uh, world championship winner ever. Uh, then he gets popped. Then he gets suspended, mm-hmm. right? Regardless of the reasons, right? He gets suspended for a full year. Um, sometimes it's longer, but he was deemed medical, yep. right? Uh, um, approved medical use under the guise, guidance of a doctor. So we're not going to suspend you for two years. We're going to suspend you from one. But during that one year, he's off competing in other promotions. I'm not sure how I feel about that. So, and I think this is where it comes circumstances. So again, this is where it gets weird, right? Is the because there's a lot of gray area and there's a lot of way to cover it up. But you just said it was it was it was deemed for a uh, purposeful medical. He uh, didn't condition. disclose it. He still broke all the I, rules in I, using I got you. it. I got you. But he, right? so you think that matters? I do. Why? I, I, and again, this is more from a personal why? standpoint. If, if the it guy matters, was, why wouldn't you disclose it? I, he probably should have disclosed it, right? And, and that comes down to where it's his fault. But if, if somebody makes a and maybe his scenario is a little bit different, right? Being someone that's a professional essentially and, and does this all the time uh but but if someone is is to make that mistake they don't necessarily realize what they're taking um you know what i mean if, if you get a steroid for bronchitis sometimes uh, right so i mean those are the kind of things that can actually pop you so disclose it right i would agree if you disclose it but if you're talking about someone who's to on me, that fringe maybe who's you know i don't on think that, there is a that, fringe uh, definitely broke, a fridge on so, competitors i mean when i say a fridge let's I mean talk a fringe, you I mean, and me yeah. Right? Let's use, let's bring this close to home. Mm-hmm. I'm on the juice because I want to get better. Sure. Right. I'm, there's no medical reason for yeah. me to be on the juice. I don't have low testosterone. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. doing sure. it yeah. specifically for the enhancements that it will provide me in my jujitsu training. Mm-hmm. So when you and I compete, yep. I get an edge. You're doing it for, let's just call it some medical reason. Yeah. Both of us, right. Mm-hmm. Both mm-hmm. of us sign up for this event yep. and it asks us to disclose. Now, I'm not going to disclose it because I'm a fucking crook and I'm doing it for sure. the benefits and I'm a big fat liar yeah. and I'm a big fat cheat, but mm-hmm. I'm doing it and I'm not going to write down, yes, I'm doing it. Yeah. They ask you, hey, do you have any medical conditions that require you to be on this? Are you taking anything that uh-huh. would be in our band list? But you're doing it for all the right reasons, but you lie. Is there any difference between us? No. Uh, well, I mean, I think, I think there's a difference between us, but it's hard to, it's hard to differentiate that. So the rules... Can't really call out for that. So, I guess. I guess I'm. I'm thinking where. Uh, and again, I, I. think this is so weird. This is such a hard area, because it's not like you said. They're not like a, a UFC. Uh, you know, an NFL that where they're paying you to compete, right? Where you're under contract with them. You know, I. I think of someone who maybe is just entering the say entering the competition, right? Starting to get there. Maybe do they, they have, have like, a again, right to like test a, in the first place. If I'm paying to enter a competition, sure. Do they yeah. have a right to test me? I. I, I think. I think they have the right to test you. You have the right to decline, but they have the right because again, they're a private and not organization, to let you and not to let you compete. compete. In their so I think they have the right, right? Okay. And especially if it's up front, it, 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 it's part of it. You have the right to decide not to, and that's why these other organizations so have the right you, not to compete. So they have a right to test you. Yeah. You have the right. Well, let's not call it the right. You have the ability to lie to them mm-hmm. and say, "Yeah, I'm not on the juice. I'm not doing anything out of the ordinary. Sure. All of the restrictions that you put in here that I signed and agreed to." I'm not doing any of those. And it finds out you're a big fucking liar. Mm-hmm. Just like me. Yeah. I lied too. No, no, no. Right? You lied, right? But you're doing it for a medical condition. Mm-hmm. I lied because I'm doing it because I'm just a big fat cheat. And again, Whatever. I think it Is there up, a difference? I, it, it comes down to a lie. What? What? So I don't get, like the fact that they gave him only a one-year suspension because it was medical. 
He yeah. lied about it. He didn't admit it. And, right? and, and I guess I want to know, like I guess for, for me, I'd want to know a little bit more about it. what is it when you say lied about it? Did he know he was taking a banned substance? Was he taking some sort of steroid that he thought was out of his system for use of, a, of, of, a, of an illness? Or was that uh, an injury thing that was provided from a doctor? I guess those are the kind of things that it provides a lot of gray area, right? And they're hard to govern, right? But those are the things that matter to me just personally, mm. right? But again, if I'm thinking from a competitive standpoint, the way people are, you know, oh, I had bronchitis. I don't know if you're lying or not, right? right? Uh, and I, you know, whatever it is. So there, there's always that gray area. Right. So I, and I, after I, the from fact, a competitive, yeah. Couldn't you, you know, they got, I don't know if he's got money. He probably doesn't have money mm-hmm. or maybe he does from his jujitsu sure. lately. But um, I know he didn't come with money, right? Coming out of Brazil or wherever he came yeah. from. Um, after the fact, you could pay a doctor to say, yeah, I put you on this. And, sure. You know what I mean? And like, you could do it before the fact. You could have that ready to go. It doesn't that he cheated. Yeah. And likely it, against other competitors who did and, not get popped and, for... And, and, and the problem becomes, though, and a lot of, and not problem, but, but the understanding where I could see what that happens, again, if he was taking it for a medical reason, right, some sort of do sickness. Do you agree with them stripping him from his world championship then? If you're going to just, I, if you're going to kind of brush it under well, the rug, no, no, it I'm is not brush medical. it under the rug. Well, no, I, I guess you got to understand the full reason behind it. But what if he can't not compete, right, from a financial standpoint? I think that's where some kind of the hardship comes in, maybe where I'm a little bit more lenient than I normally would be for a mean? drug tester. So, again, some of these guys uh, are competing in tournaments, placing in tournaments, right? That, that has a big financial effect on what they're able to do, sure. right? Their podcasts are listened to, they get sponsors, right? right? right. They, you know, all that kind of stuff. All of a sudden, if if you have to take six months, six six months off, right, from that competing circuit, mm-hmm. I don't know if there's a whole lot of prize money in it as well, but if that's what you do with Probably not living, a gi jujitsu, but yeah, maybe, yeah. But, yeah, but if that's what you do, gi or no gi, doesn't matter, right? I guess, but if that's what you do as a living, right, and then all of a sudden you know, like, hey, I, I'm sick, I took this medication, I can't compete for the next six months because it's going to stay in my system, and there's a, I don't know, 20% chance they're going to test me. Either I can tell them up front, no, they're not going to... Let, Let me, me compete. compete. Or, eh, it's only like 20%. They hardly ever test me. I'm going to give it a shot. So I'm gonna, risk I'm gonna reward it. strategy at that exactly. point. Exactly. A risk reward. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm not saying it's right. Right. And again, this is where I think it's so circumstantial. Whereas I can understand. And again, especially if it was for something that was truly legit. But again, like you said, it, it's so easy to corrupt a, a lot of these systems. It's so hard to do. So I think of a year, and I, I think of a year as a really long time. Uh, from a competitive standpoint. Sure. Right. I, th- I think that's, you know what I mean? Like, so do you think he should be morally high and not go compete in other venues or other promotions? Or do you think that, hey, it's just the IBJJF. They, there's no restrictions. I'm not beholden upon them by some contract that I signed. I'm going to go do my life somewhere else. And if that thing doesn't happen to test me, great. If they do happen to test me, well, shit, maybe I'll take the risk and get banned twice. I don't well, know. I, well, I, I guess it, it, morally it depends. If he's no longer taking the steroids or whatever he popped for, right? I, I think that becomes, again, I, I, this is where it's so it's so hard. I think it depends, right? If he's cheating, no, I don't think he should compete anywhere. I think he should be stripped and not allowed to compete if he's, if he's cheating, right? If that's the reason what's there and he's going to continue to cheat, I think he's a piece of crap, right? If, if you're continuing to do, you're cheating, right? And, and you keep doing it, no. If you, if you get popped for cheating and then you change your ways because you don't want to get popped again, I, I think I'm a little little more lenient on you, right? But if you're continuing to cheat, you're just like, oh, I'm going to just go cheat over here instead and hopefully they don't catch me. And if they do, I'll just go to the next one or the next one. No, then then morally, I think I think you're a piece yeah, of crap. All you should of, work. So all of those things, you can never know what's Correct. in somebody's heart. So Correct. let's look at it as outsiders. Do we support them competing in those other promotions? Or do we say, you know what? It's kind of a dick move. You're banned in one. You should... You should not go compete for a year now. I, I would. What pro- do we say? I'd probably, if I'm just going to be honest about it, I'd probably say you don't compete anywhere, right? Because I'm just going to jump to the, the I, I'm going to jump to the conclusion, knowing nothing about it, that he was cheating the win, right? So you shouldn't compete in anywhere then. If you're going to cheat, if you're going to cheat and own you get it, caught, own, own it, it and take the, take the full t- yeah. suspension, yeah. right? Spend that time, right? Yeah. If I'm going to take a, a moral high ground on it and how I feel, right, right? If you're going to ask me how I would act, I'd probably go compete somebody else. Sure. But, you know. And, uh, and if, if, if there's no restrictions, legally, there's nothing wrong with what he's sure. doing. Yeah. Right? So now let me ask you another question. Um, uh, what do you think about just foregoing all steroid tests altogether? I don't like And it. saying, hey, let them all. You know what? You want to do it? Go do it. You don't want to do it? Don't do it. You know what? You want to tout yourself as being a natural champion? 
versus a champion, right? You don't know. We're sure. never we're never going to test, so we're never going to know who's on the juice. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, you might be able to look at people over the course of their you know jujitsu history yeah. or their grappling history and see, oh, you went from 120 pounds to you know 215 in a matter of two years, and now you're you know built like Czech Congo when you used to be built like Kevin McCallion. I don't know, right? You might yeah. be able to identify them just based on your your perception. However, it might be cool to see who rises to the top as somebody who might be a natty and somebody who's not. So here's the problem, right? And I want to hear your your perspectives on this, but I don't like it, but as a spectator, I don't care. Right, exactly. Right? Morally, I don't like it. I think it's a, I so think it's then a bad move. I think it's a bad thing to do. The whole part of our conversation but is super, moot. Because but, if it, but if it's super entertaining, I'm, well, listen, I, I have- Then we don't have to worry about somebody getting banned in one and having to compete in other ones. I, just go do your thing. Just go I, do I, jujitsu. I, get, I don't. I don't like it. Especially, I don't like it from a. If I think about from a competitor standpoint, I, I don't like it. I don't think it should. There. I think they should put put rules in place to stop that thing from happening. I think it's unfair. So Dude, I so, guess I'm okay with his year long suspension. But in as a spectator, as we kind of, uh, I think we've talked about before, is I want to watch the best, uh, the best thing that I can watch. Right. I want to sure. watch the best entertainment value. And I don't care if they're on steroids or not. I don't care if I know or not half the time. Right. I'd prefer not to know, of course, right? I mean, I think that's... I prefer not right? to know. I want to pretend. Ignorance is bliss. Exactly. But but if they're going to... If Japan or, or China or somewhere else is going to put on a super fight with two super exciting uh, fighters, especially like two super exciting strikers who are known for their knockout and you know they're both on steroids, I'm doing it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, 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 I agree with I can't that. Wait. So, I can't wait to see someone get killed. Like, it's I, great. I don't have any problem saying that because I'm morally bankrupt yeah, yeah, yeah. as a person. But I just... I wonder... You know, when I think about, I would definitely go compete if I got popped for juice. For juicing. Oh, I would. I would definitely go to other promotions. Well, as as long as there were no restrictions. But you're already juicing. So that's the problem. Yeah, like yeah, morally, yeah. you're already okay with that. So you're well, like, I'm, I'm not going to get popped for juicing if I'm not juicing. So right, this scenario is really it's, one-sided. Exactly. Um, yeah, you're already would, a morally So person. if IBJJF banned me, mm-hmm. I would without question go to another promotion and compete in, in all of those shows, right? Yeah. I'm trying to make that money and trying to win, and I'm trying to, like, build a name for myself, obviously. Sure, you got obviously. such a small window of competitive. Right, and I'm, you know, Galval's, like, 19 or whatever, and, right, he's an up-and-coming superstar, and I do agree that this year of him not competing, if he did take an entire year off, would be pretty devastating, right? Um, But I just... I, and I, it could I, be extremely devastating, because, again, sure. what if he's... What if he's, not, you know, like, a lot of guys are... They're good, and they're good for a short period of time. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, you know, they, they flare out. Uh, the game changes, right? And all of a sudden, you don't have that same advantage that you had before. Yeah. People catch up. Whatever happens there. But if all of a sudden he, you know, at 19, like you said, you got strike when the, the iron's hot, right? Yeah. The old saying. But you, you got to do it. So from a personal standpoint, I don't blame him. I would do the exact same thing because you don't know how long this is going to last. Right. No, Especially in something like jujitsu. jitsu That high level, you're training that hard. You're going that hard, right? He, he twists his knee tomorrow. His career is done mm-hmm. at, at that high level. Maybe he can compete at the local tournaments and you know place third in some of the small IBJJ stuff. But all of a sudden, you're no longer a world champion, right? Because right. if you don't, if you have a bum knee, you're not beating the best of the world. Sure. Probably. Yeah, absolutely. So, last topic, pretty short. This is close to home for you and I. Um, we tried last year to bring back mission submission. We did. We tried it. We uh, believe it or not, Kevin. Myself and Dr. Corey Kilburn um, uh, really worked hard to organize, strategize, plan, and uh, you know do some research into hosting another mission mission submission event that would allow us to a bring jujitsu uh, competitions back to Erie slash Edinburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, right, we've we've gr- definitely grown our network over the last few years. And uh, we thought it might be an opportunity for us to try to bring people from some of our fellow schools we train with, right, from all around. And it didn't work out for us. Um, We couldn't get the venue that we wanted, which would have provided some other opportunities and some residual benefits that we don't necessarily need to talk about right now. But um, it didn't happen for us. Well, we're going about it maybe a different way. Before we tried to make it the most attractive tournament in terms of cost, we tried to give people the most matches. It was submission only, no time limit. And, you know, I think people who did come got a tremendous value out of the deal. Oh, sure. However, right, all of that value that they got um, didn't materialize in terms of the organizational side of things, right? We weren't able to, in one event, we didn't even break even, right? 
in another event, if it wasn't for some close friends who sponsored the event, um, we would not have made any money at all, right? We wouldn't have been able to pay the rest. We wouldn't have been able to write, make right on all of our obligations. So we're trying to go about it a different way. So much like I asked you about opening a jujitsu school, right? And what are the, the must-haves that you like to see at tournaments? Um, what are some things that if you were hosting a tournament mm-hmm. all on your own yep. that you would do? This is not foreshadowing for everybody listening of things we're going to do with this tournament. Um, maybe it is, but maybe it's just more discussion topic for us. Um, what are some must-haves, some nice to have some likes to have likes, like to have, whatever, yeah. um, at, at tournaments that you've seen that you want to redo and re- invest into? Mm-hmm. And, you know, let's flip it. What are some things that you're just like, I would never do that at a tournament because it fucking sucked? Well, I'll be honest. The first thing, uh, I guess when you talk about the struggle is there, the first thing I go to is your format. Right. And it it would be great to be able to say, well, we can run a format and be profitable. Uh, But if we talk about lessons learned, uh, things that you told me about the past with, you know, the tournaments I was not directly involved with is um, I would, I would look to stay away from, I would look to in this area here, right. The area that we live, I would stay away from submission only. Right. I think uh, there's uh, provide some other things that are out there, but I think uh, submission only is a little more niche, niche, whatever the right pronunciation is. And that would be the first thing I would do. I'd stay away from that. People like um, the time limit point system, right? It, it provides a clear path to victory um, for guys who are more than just jujitsu guys. There are measure. I agree with you uh, with some of what you said. Mm-hmm. There are measurable strategies and differences in competition styles when points are involved with submissions, right? In a submission only, there is no, well, in a submission only, no time limit. Mm-hmm. There's no waiting out the clock. There's no mounting and staying on top till the timer ends and you win on points, right? Because you were able to capitalize on the position, right? Submission only no time limit doesn't do that. You actually do have to end it. Yeah. So I do believe that a no time limit submission only format was detrimental to our forecasted success, right? And I do think that likely in the future events, it may be not submission only no time limit yeah, with no point. Uh Right. I mean, submission only kind of means no points, but um, I don't know that future events will necessarily follow the no time limit submission only format. Um, We're we're thinking of some different things that we're looking to do in in our future events that may make it a little more attractive, which may change the strategy a little bit more, which may provide more avenues of winning. Right. In the gym. I don't count a win if I sweep somebody and I stay on top of them all day, right? So in a gym, that is not what a win is, right? Um, Not that necessarily I count wins all that much anymore, but I was an up-and-comer, right? Before pre-black belt, pre-brown belt. Well, it, it was you. It was you, taps. Ca- you count those wins, it, right? Yeah, you count and, taps. And, and, well, you, you count taps as absolute wins, but a lot of times when you're looking to compete against somebody, especially if you're getting ready for a tournament, right? Uh, again, I'm not looking to count wins. Uh, I've never been you know, like, oh, I'm going to count wins, but I'm win- looking to win every role. Right. And being able to control the round, control the pace, stay on top and be in those dominant positions. Right. Or when you're in a non-dominant position, being able to expand those quickly matters. Right. And it matters uh, again because of the tournament, because that matters in a tournament. Right. So, again, so 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 that's there. And, and that's a sometimes that's a large part of jujitsu. Right. If you got two evenly matched people. Right. You. uh Sometimes that's the that's the way to win, right? That's the way to feel good about yourself. Maybe those are the things that you need to worry about, right? We always talk about position over submission, right? So if I can control, I can dominate a guy who we were on the evil level, and I figure out how to be able to control and position and dominate him every single round. Well, I'm happy with that because I know um, eventually the submissions are going to come, right? If I'm just holding him there, that's different. But if I'm holding him there, looking for the next step, and I can take it you slow. Just can't tie the knot. I can't I tie the knot. I can't tie the knot. So if you're talking about a gym standpoint, I can't tie the knot today. Three months from now, I'm going to tie the knot, right? right. And then I'm going to get better. And I can show that progression, but I'm still winning. I'm still, I still know I'm doing the right things. And the tournament can sometimes show that, like, hey, I, I'm, I make a lot of mistakes when I go for, you know, you, you don't, you, you take your chance. You, you don't, you don't have to take the chances, right? You can play your game. You can be safe. You can do the things that you're really good at, right? And then tying the knot, it's a little extra special, right? And even, you get a guy who you can control and dominate, and then maybe you tie the knot for when you win first place, right? That feels better. Right. Even though you you hung, you hung out and just timed out another guy that was in, in an entry of the round. Taking it a step higher, I think that the submission only no time limit also adds a little more um, mystery to the prescription of the event. For example, um, we've competed in some events that 
Um, uh, they'll basically be able to tell you roughly what time you might compete at, right? Of course, there's a disclaimer that, you know, this could change based on the amount of submissions that happen or whatever, yeah. right? But I, I think the the adding times and limits to the durations, mm-hmm. right, and not letting it be no time limit, um, I think does potentially provide for a better um, forecasted target of when people might have the opportunity to step on the mats. For example, we had a couple matches in one of the events go over an hour. Oh, yeah. And that mat, not the match, but the mat is now blocked from running any other roles or any other competitions at that particular moment for that duration of that potentially unlimited time period. Yeah. Right? Now, I think submission only, no time limit, can make for a very, very boring sure. mat. Uh, or can uh, make for a very, very exciting. Or can make for very, very exciting. So I think the way that you know future events may go for us is that there might be some mix match of all of those things, depending on what we're doing. So to, to- totally switch, not switch topics, yeah, yeah. but move on to something else, it's going to actually sound really simple, um, is I like, you see this in a lot of wrestling, mat, and I've seen this in a lot of jujitsu, but I've seen it in none is I love when they have the big brackets, and I say big, uh, you know, I don't mean like huge, but, you know, whatever, poster size brackets on the wall somewhere. Mm, okay. I love that. I love when I can go up there, I can see how many people in there, I can look at the names, I can look to see when Scott's competing, I can see so that. Does... I absolutely love having those on a wall somewhere, and especially in an area separate. Obviously, you know, having the paper ones there, but someone who goes up there and updates that, one of my favorite things. Is it is it the fact that it's made visible because yes. tournaments have them yes. abundantly digital now. Uh, the fact into, that it's, it's you made like visible. it on paper. I, I, well, paper, even if it was on a bunch of TVs, I like it on paper because if you ha- if you were going to put it digital on TVs, right? I got to sit there and I got to wait. Okay, now it's the, you know, kids, 9 and 10, 155, 9 and 10, 180. And I'm looking for the 4 or 5, 4 or 5 kids, whatever, right? Age, I can just run up there. I can see what's going on. And I would think someone like you... If you're if you're going to a lot of different tournaments with the kids, you're like, hey, when's Rick going? Oh, Rick is in here. I have a cell here. phone. I, go I can log into the Smooth Comp app yeah. or whatever app they're using and pull I, my my exact student up. I, I don't guess even I've search. never been to a tournament that oh, had it all digital dude, like that. So yeah. that's so that's nice being able to see that. I do. So I guess never being part of that, I like when they have it up and, and visible some way or another. We right? Will, I think of old school paper, yeah. but I think the ability to have it visible, having it there, is is huge. Bracketing is one of the harder parts, so I, I do agree with you that um, visible brackets, understanding of the brackets, and all of that good stuff made abundantly clear to all of the competitors is huge, and yeah. I do agree with you. How do you feel about warm-up mats? I love warm-up mats. I think, I think, I, so I, I think. So I, like a separate, a separate area off of the yeah, competition mats. I think they're great. Where people can warm up yeah, and train on. I, yeah, I, th- I think it's fantastic. Something to keep warm, you know, keep moving, you don't, you don't get that cold. Right, I, I think those are great. I think that's another, you know, really nice to have. Um, what about seating? Bleachers, non-bleachers? You have to have seating. So there's no seating, Ble- at, for example, Grappling Industries, yeah. Naga, things like that. I hate None. You're sitting people off are to in the, the side. way. It's uncomfortable. Like everything's pressed against the wall. If you're gonna throw a tournament, you need some sort of seating. I think you need uh, easiest way is bleacher seating, right? Because you get sure, inside of a right, gymnasium. Right. I think you need seating. You have to have designated seating. It can't be sitting on the floor. It just makes can't. sense. I, 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 I'm yeah, in I think agreement that. with you. Yeah, you know what else is going to sound kind of silly too? Uh, maybe a nice to have. Yep. Uh, free Wi Fi. I think there should be Wi Fi. Mm. Right? I, and again, especially as a, you know, if you're, if you're there, uh, if it's an all day event, it's a long event, right? You've got time in between. Um, so do you still uh, have a cell phone plan from like 1999? No, where, no, I got unlimited data, but data the, is like I, at a premium? I, I've got the 5G and I swear it's worse than my 4G connection lately. And sometimes you're in the wrong place, you know, like, well, if you got AT&T, you go to the back right-hand corner, Sprint works here, Verizon works in three-fourths of the place except for the mat I'm on, right? It's just, it's always a pain in the ass. So again, a nice to have, not a must have, but again, if we're, we're checking off some boxes there, free Wi-Fi. Interesting. Free interesting. Wi-Fi, put okay. it on there, right? Very interesting. If you've ever been to a, a football game, so uh, Cleveland Browns, right? Uh, right. And I think it might've got better. I went to a Cleveland Browns uh, game five years ago and it had no... No, no, no free Wi-Fi, no internet reception? signal, no reception, oh, none. Interesting, right? And again, it was just such a pain. I was having a great time. We had really good seats actually. From it was a work thing, and it was fantastic. But uh, the fact that I couldn't quickly pull up my fantasy football thing, I'm watching football, right? Mm. Just the little amenities. Like it, it, I had a great time. I still talk great about how much fun it was. But I'm still bitching about not having was Wi-Fi. Was it like a Steelers Browns game? No, it was open. It was an open. It was actually uh, opening ga- opening season opening game with a. Uh, Browns Eagles. 
Oh, okay. So Michael Vick was playing for the Eagles at the yeah. time. Pre-prison? Uh, post-prison. 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 Because okay. he was Atlanta. Right, right, right. Came he's back. on the Falcons, yeah. Right, so he's making the start. It was, it was super exciting. We were in, uh, uh, no matter, we were in Verizon's box seats. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was, it was great. Right, they had food inside. It, okay. was, it was fantastic, right? I got, I got hooked up. Um, for and it was great. Story. It was great. It okay. was great. But I didn't, we didn't start off with that. I started no, off no, with no, how yeah. much we didn't have Wi-Fi. I got you, I got you. So again, nice to have, okay. right, chicken. So we're talking about some yeah. of the funny things. So so, give me some Wi-Fi, man. So changing topics entirely, and this will be the last thing we talk about, okay? Um, uh, I, I feel like our listeners will care about this, and uh, we actually spent a few minutes on a podcast quite a while ago talking about this. How's your vasectomy been? <laughs> it's good. Like, there's no, no trouble? Yeah, no trouble. Um, I actually forget I have it. Uh, or don't have it anymore, I guess you should say. Right? How do you right? word that? So yeah, no, 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 no. So, it's, it's, I, I'll be honest. I, I don't even, like life I don't, is fine shooting blanks. And... I, I, life is fine shooting blanks. Uh, you know, uh, the load's still consistent. Interesting. Um, it was actually funny. I don't remember why, but I actually I think I felt the scar. Uh, maybe a week ago. Like there's a little bump where oh. they, they cut open. Um, uh, that or I have uh testicular cancer, and it was nice knowing you. I don't know which one. Um, uh, it was just on the sack itself i'm going to get into the details which is on the sack <laughs> itself it wasn't on the actual testicles okay. so yeah, yeah yeah other than that like i uh i completely forget i'm married so it doesn't any use to me anymore right 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 right, right? and right. i'm not good looking enough to be stepping out no, so fair but, enough yeah yeah fair yeah, enough life is uh so it's been like, life is normal like you consider it you know we're a year out right over a year over out. a year out so we're considering it a resounding success oh resounding success have you right? kept in touch with the doctor no 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 we, we've we've parted our ways <laughs> got it got it you know okay uh or the nurse who uh or, helped who with the slapped procedure. it huh didn't one of them slap it no no no, no she didn't no I thought you, yeah, it was like in a weird direction and she like angled it down. Or no, something. Well, she didn't slap it. She oh. had to put it up and tape it and it was cold. It will say. And so she had to put like tape a little bit closer than I expected to. And luckily I haven't ran into her. Was because, she a looker? Uh, no, I mean, okay. she wasn't terrible, but I still would be embarrassed to the fact like, listen, I swear it's, it's, it's a little bigger than that. Not I just much. got out of a cold pool. It's yeah, fine. I, I don't know. I was a little nervous. You guys just got done yelling at me because I didn't do a good enough job shaving. Like it wasn't. So your personal hygiene was a little bit off. I remember. No, 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 no I was clean. The personal hygiene wasn't off. I just I've never shaved bare my testicles, and it was a little harder than I expected. Interesting. Okay. So, uh, well, on that note, let's let's uh, you know send everybody back off into the real world, and um, uh, you know we are gonna try to get back. I say this every time we take these long delays. We're gonna try to get back to recording much more frequently, and we're gonna try to um. Uh, you know, get, get these released so you guys can hear us more. We can spend more time together. We'll try to get some other people on the podcast and, and try to get back to where we were. Yeah, get back to that back. host for that, that search for a second co-host. Yeah. That you've well, been looking for. I have, me out yeah. Here. I've been, but. you know, Kevin's kind of like plan Z. So <laughs> if there's any other letters in between, anybody's interested, please just call. You. So anyway, thanks for listening guys. Be on the lookout for the next podcast.